Have you ever trolled through the likes of Instagram or Pinterest and seen all the amazing custom tattoo designs, but every time you attempt one it never quite works out? Well join me in this video guys because I'm going to be guiding you step by step from taking the initial reference image and then showing you all the processes that you need to go through to make a completely unique custom tattoo design. Hey everyone, welcome to this video and today I'm really excited to bring you this where I'm going to be taking a really basic reference image for an idea and then we're going to be creating a completely custom and unique tattoo. I'm going to be guiding you through all the processes that I use. Now really really quick guys before we get into it I want to say a quick disclaimer that there's literally hundreds if not thousands of ways to create a custom tattoo design. That being from pencil and paper, pens, paint, ink, computers, iPads. So this particular method that I'm using today is using Photoshop. So do stick around to the end of this video guys because I'm going to be giving you a quick rundown of all the equipment which I use and then also I'm going to give you some really sound advice which will help you with your custom tattoos in the future. So with all that said guys let's not waste any more time, sit back, enjoy and let's get straight into it. Okay guys so the first thing we need to do is create a new document. So I've chose 600 ppi so we can get loads of detail in there. We're going to bring our first reference image in which is this skull. I'll leave a link in the description below where I found this. Drag it onto our new document and then I'm just going to label this layer skull reference. For the spelling please out there, yes I spelt reference wrong. So now we're going to create another layer and we're going to call this skull outline. Make sure it's placed on top of the reference image. Now we go to our pen tool. In the menu there select curvature pen tool and before we use this I'm just going to go up to the settings and select thickness as two pixels and really important make sure the rubber band is selected and that just makes life a lot easier when we use this tool. So I'm just going to select the colour now for our final um, line what it's going to be and then we're just going to click on points of the skull there and you can see it's naturally bending because obviously it's the curvature pen tool and we're just going to quickly go all around this, I've sped this video up and this is just going to give us our rough shape and we can add points on there if we want to refine it further just like that so I'm happy with that, I'm going to deselect that and if I remove, just hide the skull layer there you can see we've got a basic outline for our skull so now I'm going to select another new layer and call this skull eyes and literally just do the same thing going around and all I'm doing now is creating new layers I'm going to create one for the eyes one for the nose and you can create as many new layers as you like um, just to basically piece all this together so you can see now we've got our basic skull outline so there's a really cool thing we can do I've selected the skull outline the first one we did select the pen tool go to stroke and if we increase that you'll see the line starts to get thicker now this is a really easy way of getting a nice uniform line for our design and then I'm going to do the same with the eyes and the nose and the teeth just refining that a little bit further so now I'm going to select our brush tool and I'm actually going to draw on the teeth rather than use the curvature, um, the curvature pen tool so I'm just drawing these in, I'm going to delete the bottom of the skull there and then just freehand the bottom of these teeth for what I want. Just tidying up a few parts. Now I'm going to open our new reference image which is this snake. Just going to delete quickly just a rough chop around it there so it's more manageable, more workable. Place it where we want it and again use the curvature pen tool and do exactly the same what I've done with the skull and get our basic outline in. Now I'm using the normal pen tool which will give us straight edges rather than curved ones for the eye there. And then for the scales I'm literally just drawing them on with the brush. So now that all that's done I'm going to use the stroke again and bring the, the line weight up for the snake's head. Now I'm going to open another reference image, another snake. I'm going to use free transform and warp to put that in position and again curvature pen tool going round. I'm going to draw all these scales in with the brush tool again. I'm not using curvature on that, I'm just freehanding those in. Put 
those in there. And now what I need to do, because I need to delete the skull, I need to resticize the skull layer so it turns it into a normal layer, then I can start deleting parts of the skull so it makes sense. Now I've selected my brush tool again. I've selected like a light blue just to give us a, a basic sketch and I'm just sketching this on with the brush tool. And once I've got it how I want it to look, I can refine that with the curvature pen tool to get a final copy again. Increase the stroke and that's looking nice. And the thing with Neotrad, they have different line weights, you know, they have some thick lines, some thin lines, and it really starts to make your design pop with all these different line weights. So just like we did before, we're going to remove parts of the skull, so obviously it makes sense. It's going to bring those horns in front of the skull. I don't want any lines that don't make sense. And now all I'm doing is tidying up the scale, zooming in on parts that I'm not happy with, and really starting to refine it. Now I'm bringing in our next reference image, which is another snake and I'm just getting the tail of that one there on the nose of the skull. I've used the curvature tool, the curvature pen tool for the outline and then I'm just drawing in those scales. Once I'm happy with that I'll make that layer disappear, the reference image layer. And now it's just a matter again of deleting where the skull is to make the design make sense. Drawing in a few more scales here because I wasn't happy with the first ones that I did. And then just cleaning everything up, really starting to refine the line work. Putting some more details in, just some random lines, you know, cracks and stuff to give it a bit more detail. We obviously need to get rid of the snake here because the horn is in front of the snake. And you can see it's really starting to come together now, this outline. And already it's a million miles away from what the reference image was. The cool thing about skulls is you can add loads of like subtle details, cracks and stuff and they all seem to work. Well that's looking really good now and that's pretty much ready to save and we can save that as our stencil and before we continue if you've got a stencil printer you can literally print that out and that is good to go for a tattoo. So now let's move on to preparing our layers for colour. So it's really good practice to organise our layers before it gets too complicated so I'm just clicking on all our reference image layers, right clicking and select group from layers. And I'm going to label this reference images and all this is going to do is group all our reference images into one folder, nice and easy to find everything. I'm going to untick the eyeball just to make them disappear and just drag that out the way. Now I'm going to select all the layers which make up our outline right click and merge layers. Then I'm just going to label this outline and that puts all our outline layers into one layer. I'm going to right click convert to smart object and all this does is if we do need to resize it it's going to keep the quality and it's not going to go blurry or anything like that. So now what we're going to do is create a new layer and we're going to call this skull base color and what we're doing here is going to break up our design for ready for color so we're going to select the magic wand tool there select our outline to highlight it, click just outside our design and then we're going to go to select, modify and expand. We're going to expand it by two pixels. Don't worry guys, I'll explain why we're doing all this in a second. Then I'm going to go to select inverse, So highlight our school base colour, select a new colour just like a grey, it doesn't really matter at this stage what colour we choose and then go to edit and fill. Now what this will do, it will create a fill colour of our design. So if we come across here, I'll show you. We've got our outline still, but also we've got a new layer of a fill colour. So now what we need to do is just repeat what we've just done, but just going round our design and breaking it up into different elements. So this is going to be the eyes, we've created a new layer, Again, select outline, magic wand, and we're going to select our eyes. And we're just going to blitz around the whole design now, creating all different layers for our design. And again, I'm going to show you and tell you exactly why we're doing this. So bear with me, guys. So the reason we've done all this is because, let's say you want to colour this skull in now. So we've selected our paintbrush, and look, it's just going all over the skull there. It's covering everything up, and it looks 
pretty rubbish. So you could create a layer and paint underneath the outline layer, which will give you this effect where you can still see the outline, but the paint is still going beyond the outlines of the skull, which is gonna make it really, really hard to color in. So what we do is we create a new layer. We're gonna clip it to our skull base layer by holding Alt and clicking. And now if you see, it will only paint within the boundaries of our skull layer. You can see I'm holding down the brush, painting big long strokes, but it will only paint in the area which we cut out. And we can do this on any layer. So we select the snake head, create new layer, hold out, clip it to the snake head. I'm just gonna choose a different color. And look, it will only paint inside our snake head. It won't go beyond the boundaries of it. And this is why we've chopped it all up because it's prepared our design now for color and the fun part. So now the fun part. I've created a new layer, clipped it to our skull layer, right clicked and selected gradient. Now we're gonna to go to greens and we're just gonna select a nice gradient there and we can mess around with the sliders. We can change the colors of um, all sorts of different details on it just to get the look that we want. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. So now I'm gonna create an adjustment layer of solid color, clip it to our snake's head so it will only apply to the snake's head. And then we can just start drawing on some purples there with a paintbrush and it will only stay within the confines of the snake head because our layer is clipped obviously to the snake's head. Then I'm going to create another layer inside the snake head layer, make this a little darker. I do this a lot with shadows rather than just using a black shadow I tend to select the highlight colour if you like so the purple and then have a really dark purple instead of just using black and it just makes your image a li little bit more dynamic. So again, I'm creating another solid color adjustment layer. If I clip it to the snake's body there, it will only apply it to the snake's body. So you can see why we've, we've broke up all these layers because it makes things a lot faster and a lot smoother with the workflow after we've prepared all these layers. So now I'm gonna go another solid color. You can see it's applied it to the whole scene, but soon as I clip it to the snake tail by holding out and clicking on the snake tail, it will only apply it to the snake tail. So it seems complicated at first, but when you get your head around it, it's super powerful, it works really well. So again, with the snake tail coming out of the nose of the skull, I've selected that layer. But this time I'm gonna add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer, clip it to the tail, and then I can mess around with the brightness there and it will only affect whatever layers that I've clipped it to. Now I'm gonna go to the teeth, just adding some shadow there, some shade, just drawing it on with a soft brush. And now I'm gonna work on the horns. So I've selected a solid color adjustment layer there. I'm gonna add another layer, clip it to it, and I'm gonna call this shadow. Now I'm gonna, like I did before with the snake scales, select the highlight color, then drag it down to make a darker version of it. And then I can use this for my shadow. And I'm just painting these on with a soft brush. So to add shadow to the skull, I'm going to do something slightly different. I've created a solid color adjustment layer. I'm going to bring this green right down to almost black. And you can see it's applying it to the whole picture. But as soon as I clip it to the skull, it applies it to the skull. Then I'm going to press Control I to invert it. And this makes basically a mask. So what we're doing now is just basically bring in selected parts of that hidden mask back onto the scene. So now I'm moving on to the eyes, just like I did with the horns, I'm using just a light, sketchy blue brush. Just roughing that in there, and then when I'm happy with the, the rough shape of it, I'll start refining it with a, a solid colour. Just doing the pupil there, you can see it takes quite a few attempts just to get it right. And I add a solid colour adjustment layer there, red, and really start to build up everything. You can see the brush I'm using there is different to the brush I've used previously, this is like an oil paint brush. And I like to use different brushes because it just, it gives the image a, a bit more of a dynamic feel rather than using the same soft brush for everything. But it's really making those scales in the eye start to pop. Just building up those dark greens for the shadows. Now I'm going to create another new layer. I'm going to call this eye colour yellow. This is all clipped in the same eye layer. And we're just going to start building this up. Adding layer upon layer of darks, whites. Now I'm just going to start drawing in the finer details of the eye, like, you know, the little veins in there. 
I did notice when I zoomed out the veins were a bit too small so I did zoom in again and made them bigger. But again, stuff like this is all trial and error. In the snake's eye there, I thought it would be cool to make it look like, a, like its eye was missing, it was part of the skull and putting the snake's eye in the skull, um, which is why it looks like that. Now I'm just adding some highlights to the scales of the snake. Now I'm really having fun with it, just going round the whole thing, you know, darkening up places, adding highlights to it, really starting to make it pop. And when you get to this stage of the design, th this is where I like to have the most fun with it, you know, really putting your, your own creative flair on there. Bit of shine on the scales there, bit on the teeth. Don't overdo it with highlights, but a few highlights does um, make the image look less flat make it pop a lot more. You can see I'm thickening up those veins in the eyes to make it more readable when you've zoomed out. It looks good when it's zoomed in but when it's zoomed out it's not very readable. Darkening up a few more places and then I'm just gonna bring in like a flash background there make it look more authentic. The flash is usually on this sort of coloured paper. I'm gonna crop that down now I'm just going to slap my signature on there, date it 2021, I'm going to bring a watermark in and then turn the opacity down on it, you don't want that you know, really prominent in the scene. And then you can make some really fine adjustments now. Um, first of all we need to group all these layers which with all the colours and everything and merge them all together so we've just got that one design. But before you do that make sure everything is how you want it. Then we're going to go to filter camera raw filter and then we can just add those fine tweaks of adjustments and again there's no right or wrong way to this it's down to personal taste and the, the look that you want you know you can mess around with contrast exposure highlights clarity all these things so i'm just increasing the blacks there just to, just to give it a little bit more definition and when i'm happy with that i'm just going to click ok and there we have it guys, that's our final reference image to complete custom tattoo design. So I did say at the beginning of this video that I was going to give you a quick rundown of the equipment which I used to create this custom tattoo and also give you a little bit of advice to help you out with your future creations. The software which I used for this tattoo design was Adobe Photoshop version 2021. Now you can get Photoshop for about £9 a month if you just want Photoshop on its own. And it's a really good deal because you get all the latest updates, bug fixes, and all the latest versions, all for that monthly subscription fee. Now, I'm not saying there's you can only use Photoshop for tattoo designs. Obviously, there's hundreds of different programs. There's even some free programs. But for me personally, I've always used Photoshop, so it's what I'm most comfortable using. Now, the hardware which I used for this design was a Wacom Syntex 16, which is a creative pen display. I think this is a really cool piece of kit because it has pen pressure which you can use directly onto the screen, you can draw directly onto the screen. It's fully compatible with most illustration programs and works absolutely perfect with Adobe Photoshop. Now finally guys, I'm going to give you some advice and hopefully it's going to help you out with your future tattoo designs. Now first and foremost I want to say this, don't get bogged down with um, looking at all the latest, you know, fangdangle technology to create tattoos and you know because you haven't got it or maybe you can't afford it and then you think well that's me then I, I'm never going to be able to create these amazing tattoos that I see on Instagram and Pinterest because it's just not the case. So my advice to you would be is use what you've got. If you've got just a pencil and paper use it, it's fine. Paints, use them. Um, if you are looking to upgrade and you know and you, and you do want to use something like an iPad, that's fine as well. There's no set rules. Um, my point in all of this is it's not about the equipment that you haven't got. It's more about mastering the equipment that you have got. And again, that being a pencil and paper, become a master of pencil and paper. If it's an iPad, become a master of the iPad. And, you know, with regards to tablets and things like that, the technology side of design work, technology is good, it's really good, but it's only good, again, if you master using it, um, because it can be quite complicated, and a lot of the time it's easy just to say, you know, I don't want anything to do with this, I've got my pencil and paper, I'm good. Um, and I know loads of people that do that, and they're amazing artists, and 
you know, that's just what they do. So again, my point is, if you are using like tablets and iPads and things like that, really, really get to know the software and it'll open up loads and loads of doors. Um, but if you just don't learn it and you just sort of like, you know, you've got your iPad and this brand new shiny program that does absolutely everything, you're probably going to end up with some weird looking stick man. And that's about all you'll, all you'll do with it. And my final piece of advice for you today, guys, is this. When it comes to tattoo design, you've got to remember it is literally just another medium of art. Um, and it's easy to, you know, get carried away looking on the internet um, and looking at all these like amazing designs and just thinking, oh, I'm never going to be able to do that um, and, and get quite disheartened about it. And then what happens then is it leads to you overthinking things and not relaxing and you know just going with the flow and seeing what you create and when you get past that um mentality of you know of looking at other people's stuff and then comparing yourself to them just forget that when you do a tattoo design just you know if you've got a pencil and paper in front of you just get your pencil and paper and just clear your mind of you know oh but it doesn't look like this guys or this girl did did this and it was amazing. We don't care about that. We just want to concentrate on what we're doing and we want to have fun with it. And that's a really important point to make as well, guys. You've got to have fun with it. Just loosen up a bit, enjoy yourself. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It's a piece of paper or it's a, a delete on a screen. Um, and the best designs created from things like this, from from loose ideas and just going with the flow. Um, and you'll find when you do that, the idea will build on itself. Um, even the design that I did today, I didn't have that clear set in stone picture in my head before I designed it. I sort of, when I started going through, I was thinking, oh, maybe maybe this color would look pretty cool. And then it's, oh, the, I maybe do this with the eye. And you know, and w when you start getting this sort of mentality, that's when the creativity starts coming in. So to sum up, guys, what I'm saying is, is don't overthink stuff, don't compare yourself to other people and just enjoy yourself because that's what art's all about. It's not for, you know, getting upset and downbeat and feeling bad that you're not good enough. It's about enjoying yourself and having the freedom to do what you want. And let's not forget, guys, art can be created anywhere. It can be created with you know, at the beach with a stick, just drawing something in the sand. It can be created putting your handprints in mud. You know, it can be anything. And th there's no one that can say that's wrong and that's right, because art is all down to personal perception. And if you enjoy it and you like what you've done, then what's the harm? So with all that said, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it means the world to me. If you did like this video and you've took anything away from this video at all, smash that like button and just let me know. Don't forget to stay up to date with all my latest videos by hitting that subscribe button. If you've already subscribed, don't forget to tick the notification bell and then you can stay up to date with all my latest uploads. With all that said, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.